Okay, we're heading back to the state of Maine right now. Let me do this before we start. First, I'm going to welcome Charlotte, then I'm going to ask her to listen while I read a couple of things, and then we're going to dive into this. Hello, Ms. Iserbeet. How are you, my friend? Well, I guess I'm just about as good as anybody could be expected to be after uh, a three-year three saga, three-year saga to protect the Constitution and, uh, you know, to identify the criminals in our main government, I'm sorry to have to say. Well, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let me read this first. I got two emails from Charlotte. I'm just going to read from them briefly. How shocking that after last Friday's hearing on the nomination of Sawchuck. Sawchuck? Sawchuck? Yes, yeah, Sawchuck. All right, Sawchuck, attended by hundreds of Mainers who were overwhelmingly in opposition to the nomination of Sawchuck, the Maine Senate decided without public hearing three days later to vote immediately on his confirmation. It's a sad day for Maine when testimony from my son, a U.S. combat marine in Gulf War I, testimony backed up by discovery materials, eyewitness reports, which never saw the light of day, and audio of police planning to assassinate my son, was ignored by members of Maine's Senate. Chairman of Judiciary Committee wouldn't let Sam play the damaging audio, which proved the case. Why the hasty vote? Why no full Maine Senate hearing prior to taking a vote? There's one. Here's the other one. Most important fact is this. Sam and I offered the Republican candidate for governor, Sean Moody, and the independent candidate, Hayes, the complete discovery materials provided by us, provided to us by the district attorney's office, which prove that Portland Police Chief Sawchuck was involved in or authorized the two attempted murders of my son, Samuel Iserby, a resident of Portland, Maine, and a U.S. Marine combat veteran of Gulf War I. There were at least five eyewitness reports and the audio with police planning to kill Sam. They could have used these documents to defeat Democrat Janet Mills in her run for governor of Maine. They didn't dare use this important information and allowed Janet Mills to win the governorship. I blame these candidates for the approval of Portland Police Chief Michael Sawchuck to be the Commissioner of Public Safety and Criminal Justice for the state of Maine. Had they the guts to use these materials, Janet Mills would not be governor today, and criminal former Portland Police Department chief, under whose realm the solving of homicides was the lowest in Maine and in the nation would not be in charge of the safety of Maine or in charge of criminal justice. So there you go. That gives you a background. It said that as Maine goes, so goes the rest of the nation. And as Maine has gone now, communist, hammer and sickle red, I wonder how much longer the rest of the nation has. Charlotte? I don't know. Uh, I am very sad. Uh, not, you know, we've been through a lot the last three years, and oh, I've, I've of course, been, one, I've, is your, one is your son, yeah, you know, yeah. who who barely survived, thank God for the surgeon and the wonderful patrolman, Bennis, who... Uh, it's a miracle. Kids. It was a miracle. Uh, it is a miracle, yeah. and uh, so we had that miracle, but then what happened on Friday... And then two days later, we thought we would have at least a week or more to prepare for the Senate hearing. Yeah. They pulled a fast one. It was sort of like, remember, the Federal Reserve? Uh, they got it through on Christmas Eve or the yep. day before. Yep. It was an absolutely corrupt move. And uh, they are terrified that that audio uh, would be heard by the committee, and they would not let Sam play it. Uh, he, he started to play it, and the chairman, chairwoman of the Justice Committee last Friday, she pushed her button and adopted it. And then Sam, good for him. I'm glad he did what he did. He just called them a bunch of fascists. And what was interesting is that the Capitol Police, who are not elected, they're good guys and gals. 
They told us, well, first of all, they were really very, they helped me. I, I was in pretty bad shape, right? Uh, so they took my arm and said, come sit, sit down here. You know, it's not, this isn't the full vote. The full vote will come up in the Senate next week or, you know, 10 days from now. It could go the other way. And they said, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had in the state capitol on a vote. Wow. 80% about of the people there were opposed to Chief Sochuk's being confirmed. They know. They know. Got Governor Mills, new Governor Mills, that was her boy, and she made sure she pulled every string she could to oh, get yeah. confirmation. He, he's, been pla- he's been planned for that job for a long, long time. And uh, I'm, I hope this doesn't happen in other states. Uh, maybe the only good thing about it is it's a warning. But I've been warning for a long time, Jeff. Yes, ma'am. A long, long yeah. time about a lot of things, you know, and uh, whether people listen or not, I don't know, but I don't think so. I, I don't know that- anyone, Charlotte, who's been warning as intently and patriotically and brilliantly as you have for all the years you've been on this program. I've never heard anything from you that should not alarm any honest, law-abiding American citizen. From the book on to this, doesn't matter. It's all, I know, it's, and you, I mean, you keep putting I, it I, out I, there. Uh, I'm thrilled the book is being, uh, I'm going to, you know, where San Paulo, Brazil, and what, May, for the, uh, my book is going to be, um, you know, what, outed, or whatever you want to call it, in Portuguese, and... Uh, you mean released in uh, Portuguese? They're reprinting yeah, they're it down there. they're translating it into Very Portuguese good. in Very Brazil yeah. because they feel the Brazilians have got to know what's in it. And, you know, I didn't... That book is not just education. 25% of it is highly political. It goes all the way back to how this mess happened that we're looking at right now, a police state. I can say that unreservedly. We are looking at a police state, and I believe Maine is the first one to officially adopt the concept and it has to do with a community oriented policing system that I talk about all the time. Tops. And this police chief has been working on that for oh probably well over twenty years. And I made the mistake, I guess, writing about it twenty years ago too. And of course nobody has to listen to me about it. Why don't they just read what I've gotten out over and over, which is Detective Wirtz of San Diego, highly thought of detective, who wrote a 15-page article on the community-oriented policing system being the East German Stasi. It's Agenda 21, uh, all-inclusive. Uh, it's communism. There's no other word for it. It is, completely. And I'm sorry, you know, I give up. This is my last one. I'm not in it anymore. I'm finished now. I really am. I mean, everybody always says you say that, and then you aren't. Well, this took it for two, look, three years of this of fighting this and not having any support, really, except from your people. The people in Maine have been pathetic. We've had no, no support, even from people that I knew well. Uh, when I formed the Maine Conservative Union in the 1970s, there, there are still people around that were members, and none of them have come to support me. Or Sam. And uh, it, it, to me, it's, you know, it's just so sad. I mean, not just for me. Where are these people? Is this, does this exist in every state where people just don't care anymore about anything? They don't. Many if of them don't. don't. I don't if they They've don't want to care about Charlotte. me and my son, that's sad for me. But to care about what we're talking about is different. What you're talking about extends coast to coast. This is not anything isolated to Maine or your case. This is a harbinger of the end of America. That's what it is. Wake up and listen. And how can these people look in their children's and grandchildren's eyes? I don't know. And not, I mean, maybe I'm too sensitive or something, but I think this is just horrendous. It's horrendous. How can we let this happen? It, 
didn't have to happen. If they'd listened to you, Jeff, myself, and your other people, they're wonderful people out there. I don't know, not enough, but they've been telling the truth, and nobody wanted to listen to them. I mean, have we got to go through this before we come out the end of a tunnel that is going to have brighter sunshine? I don't know. Well, it's 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 a miracle that Sam is here. It, it's a miracle I'm still here after what they did I to know. me. So I know. at least we have the voices, two voices, and there are many good voices out there. We have a First Amendment, which is being allowed to be desecrated. We're not standing up oh. on our Constitution. And this yeah. issue of the Senate, had they simply had a normal, open hearing, you and Sam would have been allowed to testify. Oh, oh yes. And you would I have mean, blown that nomination out of the building. Well, they did. They never allowed the audio no. to no. to get out. You have to give them. You have to give them credit. But the Judiciary <laughs> Committee meeting was Friday, yeah. and we knew then because it was only sort of it was what eight in favor of the chief and and four. You know, it was foot down party line. Okay. Well, we knew that that probably was going to happen. But they would not let Sam play the audio. And then they threw him out of the building, which is all right, you know, because he could take care of himself. But they were very good. They got me a taxi to take me home. And they couldn't have been nicer. The guys who worked there, right, and the gals. One gal was wonderful. And, you know, so, but we figured they told us. The guys who worked there said, don't worry about the vote tonight because there will be a big Senate hearing. And so... It never happened. Mm-hmm. It, they they had the Judiciary Committee vote on Friday. Then you have the weekend. Then Monday night, they publish in the record or whatever for the, for the legislature that they're going to have a hearing this morning. Yeah. And they, they vote for him. And my feeling is every single Republican should have walked out. They voted against it, and they're in the minority, but no, they should have walked out and said, this is the biggest farce that ever happened. You saw the, 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 the police guy at the Capitol on Friday told me there has never been a turnout like this. Now, most of it was, the, thank God for the, you know, the uh, Sportsman's Alliance of Maine. Mm-hmm. But the tragedy there as well was they knew about Sam's case, but they never mentioned it. And that was a mistake because, yes, we all know we want our constitutional rights, and this police chief's going to do away with all our gun rights. We know that. But they should have mentioned the police chief's lack of concern for the use of guns to kill innocent people. They knew about Sam, and they didn't use it either. It's like it was the biggest secret in this you are, universe. You are. You and Sam are the biggest secret in Maine politics in that well, particular the universe. Area. Could be. Could be. Certainly across the country. Yeah. And, you know, we do have that one thing on the tape that says it's not federal now. That was coming out of the chief's mouth. It's not federal now. Well, I know. I mean... I we you played know, it all here, and we. I know you have, and and you were the one. You've got the audio tape, and but there's nothing we can do. I mean, I don't. It's so sad because I've been working. You know, I went overseas when in 1953, yeah. and uh, Korean War, and I've been at it ever since. And yeah. Yeah. and I love I love my country, and. Uh, I don't know, Charlotte, dear Charlotte. I talked to Sam yesterday, and yeah. uh, I'm. So grateful every time I talk to him. He's 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 brilliant and uh, what a hero! What a real American hero! Oh, he, he is. is. You know, yeah. he saved twenty three cu- guys in combat in That's the Gulf right. War One, and 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 he he really does love this country. I don't know. Maybe I brainwashed him. He started at age fourteen with me, and he put all the Reese Committee hearings up on the the only the only copy of the hearings in the world mm-hmm. that. You know, the, own, the owner of them was offered any amount of money by the minions of the foundations mm-hmm. for that one copy, and I bought it and because he trusted me, the guy who owned it. And so Sam had to put uh, more, too, but 
3,000 pages hand scanned into his website. And I mean, he's worked like, you know, he's been amazingly. You know, yeah. I mean, really, oh, it's, it's just so. That's and then he gets shot by, by the, by the police, in his own city, and he owns his house. And as the detective said to me, the wonderful Goodale said, two days after, he said, Charlotte, look, aside from the attack on Sam, he should have been arrested and charged immediately for terrorizing the community for coming down the street with a gun threatening to murder Sam. And and yeah. we know Sam talked to another detective recently who said Sam said, What would you do if you saw a guy like that in town? He said, Shoot him Yeah, mad dog. That's what the uh, so they're good good police in the Portland department. But this chief and he is now the head of public safety and criminal justice in the state of Maine. And I blame the Republican candidate, Moody and, and Hayes, who if they had taken that information and got it out, Janet Mills would never have been elected. You're right. I completely agree with you, Ep. All of this I've studied, watched, read. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But you're also right. This was preordained. It was oh, yeah, all he's a been trained. This guy oh, yeah. has been on the fast track ever since he returned from the U.S. Marine Guard job in Moscow, Russia. There you go. During the Soviet yeah. Union. Okay. Exactly. Get, get At the clear. time when Louis Free was over there signing, embracing the head of the KGB. And there he was, the Marine Guard. Now, I'm not saying anything about him bad, but I am saying that there have been two U.S. Marine Guards who were caught as spies. Mm -hmm. And they're now in jail. Mm hmm I'm not saying he's a spy. I'm saying something is very wrong. And also, the guy who shot Sam, he was given a public defender without being arrested or charged. I and remember. That, that, I know. I that, know. That, that public defender by the name of Neil Duffett was the first one to put his foot down in Russia after Ronald Reagan signed the exchange agreements in 1985 to set up a legal exchange. And and that is, no, that's on my website, deliberatedumbingdown.com. I see a lot of very strange things going on between Maine and Putin. Really? Huh. Well, what's Russia? Uh-huh, yeah. Huh? Well, the KGB was never disbanded. They just changed the name. And uh, That's right. I, I read that 90%, 95 Putin over the KGB, nine. and I'm going to go out a little bit on a limb here, because who cares now? I'm looking at Robert Mueller, and I've checked him out because I was sort of supporting him. But a very good researcher talked to me, and I have an open mind, and I, he mentioned to me about, remember Senator Stevens in, in Alaska? Sure. Yeah, well, Robert Mueller went after him, and I always considered Stevens one of he our He went finest. after Ted Stevens. Ted Stevens was a good guy. Yes, he went after Ted Stevens. So I'm beginning to think, hmm. And then I look at Donald Trump, and I look at his record with the oligarchs and Manafort and over there. Mm -hmm. And they're all working together. And sometimes I really wonder if Donald Trump isn't working with Robert Mueller and that they're going to put in the merger. You know, that's not as outlandish as it may seem to some. Uh, I don't trust any of it. I think it's two or three I don't layers either, deep. But the, the merger has to take place. That's what Rowan Gaither told Norman Dodd. 
that they were the, it's the merger mm -hmm. and that the foundations got their instructions from the White House that was Eisenhower at the time mm -hmm. and the instructions were to use their money to bring about a merger between the United States and Russia and that would now include China. So now we have Trump talking about INS, you know, the intermediate nuclear yeah. thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're having a problem with Russia right now, aren't we? Well, then, you know what's going to happen? So Russia and China and the United States are all going to sit down, aren't they? And then they're all going to act like they hate each other. And then we're going to come to an agreement, which will be the merger. No, it's just Charlotte imagining it sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Not when I consider who's saying it. And, and don't forget, uh, what's his name? Golitsyn, yeah. who wrote New Lives for Old. He said that it's Lenin, 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 and it will never go away. And then Golitsyn also said about the oligarchs, that the oligarchs, which Trump has been dealing with in Manafort, huh, for how long, yeah. are totally controlled by, guess what, the KGB. So I'm looking at this in a different way. I've had to get off my sort of pro Mueller kick, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to wonder if Mueller and Trump aren't possibly working together. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Hold on, we have to pause for a minute. And it, it becomes even more interesting when you, I guess, accept the reality. And I think it's true. Trump could have gotten rid of Mueller in the beginning. Yep. But he didn't. So the question is obvious. Why not? Did he need all this apparent grief? Or is there Great. something else going on? All right, Create hold on. The problem, people scream, impose the solution. Exactly. Be right back with Charlotte in a minute. Okay, we're back with Charlotte Thompson Iserby. Her book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, is an historic treasure. It shows how the whole thing was pulled off. Planned, her documentation is astounding. It's all true. There's no way to argue about it. This has been an absolute design destruction of the greatest jewel of a nation, of a sovereign nation, state, on the planet. And this is a crucial part of that destruction. You can't get any more crucial than taking the education system and turning it into a mind control system, which is exactly what it is and worse. Go ahead, my dear. Uh, let's carry on with this. I'm, well, I'm really what I'd sick. I'd like to point out for people who happened. think I'm insane, and I don't blame them. Uh, I've talked about Carol Quigley many times. He was the historian mm -hmm. for the Council on Foreign Relations, and he wrote the book, Tragedy and Hope. And uh, it's a huge book. <laughs> on page 112, 1200 or something, he says, basically, that the industrialists in the late 1800s met together, and they planned on how they would... The only way they could get what they want, which is this new world order, is to control both parties at the top. And so that has been happening ever since. And so they pointed out that when we peons go to the polls, we'll vote. We'll think we're getting what we want, but we're getting what they want. Now, when I talk about, of course, Mueller's a Republican, and so is Trump. But to me, it's very possible that this this is very possible that they're working together, and they they haven't got everything in place yet, so it has to take a long time. And uh, uh, I had, I had really. I was overboard for for Robert Mueller for a long time, really thinking he was great because of his service in the Vietnam War and all that, right? Yeah. But then I really, when I read this business about the Alaska Senator Stevens, I was sickened. And I thought, this guy is not good. And now there's Trump. So they're both working. I just do believe that the merger is going to take place someday. 
because that's the plan. Mm-hmm. And the Soviet Union never died. No, they gave Isms it a new coat don't of paint. die. Yeah. Isms do not die. Mm-hmm. What we have right now in Maine is fascism. We have a police state. And we have marvelous, they're marvelous policemen that I know and detectives who would have been fantastic in that job. That's a remarkable statement you just made, by the way. Isms never die. That's a classic. They no, don't. they don't die. Yeah. They sometimes get pretty crappy. Excuse my language, but mm-hmm. I'd like another point here is if people don't believe me, what happened? I want them to answer me. Why was the Dodge Iserbeet case locked? <laughs> now, our attorney asked, provided a motion to unlock, but they refused to unlock. Why? All right, now, number two, the community-oriented policing system that's going in all over the country, Mm -hmm. I used to talk about the Gene Gang plan, and nobody listened to me. It's a great drawing about how you're going to be controlled. We posted that. Yeah, you did. That program is a public-private partnership. And in case people don't know what that is, that's totally unconstitutional. Now, after the incident with Sam, shortly after, like a week after, the community-oriented policing system representative where Sam lives, they have about 10 groups in Portland, published on the Internet the minutes of the West End Neighborhood Association, which included, they didn't mention his name, but that, an individual in that area had shot himself in the leg, which was the murderer's lie, which was planned long before he carried out the attempt. In fact, he had, the murderer had called the Portland Police Department two times before the attempted murder, three or four days before. Now, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, there we have... The publication of a lie by this public-private partnership known as the Community-Oriented Policing System. Remember it by cops, everyone. You've heard it before. By cops, which is known, which in 10 days, listen, folks, it was published by this public-private partnership called COPS, which is very dangerous. It's modeled on the East German Stasi. 10 days before the official... Portland Police Department incident reports that considered my son victim and Fred Dodge a suspect, and which included five or six eyewitness statements. Now, our lawyer wants to talk to our guidance, who is the head of the cops program. Well, he's evidently very important. Because he even told the attorney for the police chief that he refuses to speak to the Israelites lawyer. (laughs) Now, go figure. Mm. Now, that's pretty bad. She's a pretty good woman, the uh, attorney for the police department. doesn't mean that she likes the chief or anything, but she's been there a long time, right? right? She's been there as a lawyer for the police department. She's highly thought of. This, this patrolman has the nerve to tell her that he refuses to speak to the Israelites' lawyer. Now, you think that's good, folks? You like that out there? You still like the cops program? When are you going to start doing your research? It's very easy. Just Google cops, community-oriented policing system, Department of Justice. Google Trojanowitz. D, uh, Detective Wirtz talks about him. Google him. He started it about 40 years ago. He talks about the family not being in charge anymore, not not being capable of dealing with things, that the cops have to come in. The cops have to run the community because the families aren't capable anymore of doing it. This is not Charlotte talking. Look him up. T-R-O-G-A-N-A. W-I-T-Z or something, and then just put cops. I'm asking every listener, because they won't believe me. 
Look it up. Yes. And also type in newswithviews.com Detective Wurtz. W-O-R-T-S. And you will read a 10-page document from a brave detective written in 2001 about the COPS program, mm -hmm. which he says is the Stasi, the East German Stasi, which was the most brutal police state the world has ever known. Now, that's being put in here. And our police chief, the one who just got appointed, as I call him, Commissar, in Maine. Very good. Yeah. He's the first one. He's the first one, to, the first thing to page to fall. Our state. Your state's not next? Don't wait. Check it out. You know, we have uh, the city manager job, now the Agenda 21 program which usurps the mayor usurps the city council uh, power and authority absolutely it's a the city manager is a dictator if you have a city manager you have a dictator and that's agenda 21 this is all part of the the, the same beast oh yes it is it's i'm glad you brought that up of course it is now portland which is not a big city but it, you know they call it, we are considered a smart city now, right? Whenever you hear smart, it means dumb, huh? That's all right. language is all the opposite. That's the Soviet system too. But we also we have a city manager and we have a mayor. And then you can go back to that great article you published, you know, uh, Maine Heritage, which is behind this whole operation. Uh, had their luncheon, and uh, when Sam and Steve Schran tried to bring the truth out about what had happened to Sam and the fact that the mayor had heard the audio tape and the city manager had heard the audio tape. And at that meeting, because the mayor was the guest of Heritage, he lied. And he said he couldn't remember that. He couldn't remember talking to Sam about that. Sam had three, four phone calls with him. Mm -hmm. He heard it. He lied. And then then the head of the main heritage says, oh, uh, you know, oh, 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 you know, I don't I, I just don't think this is the place to talk about this. And then the audience says to my son, the combat marine, he says, shut up and sit down. I'll never forget that. When I heard that. Now, if people out there really like that story, maybe, you know what? I think it's so remarkable, the story, as Sam said, nobody believes it. Yeah. We should probably give it to Gresham. Yeah. Or to one of the writers. And well, then, the, room, the room was full of communists, it sounds to me, even if they don't well, even the recognize it. The city in Portland is full of communists. In fact, I'm going to say this. I think each state has a very active communist cell. Oh, I completely concur. Look, and Just look up Agenda nobody... 21. There you go. It's right there. Yeah. You can see it... the public ex display of it. It's obvious. Go on. Exactly. Now, I know a very great gal in New Hampshire. She handles my website. And she's fighting on the ground. You know, like most Americans, oh, they would never fight on the ground anything nowadays. You know, they might get shot or something. Well, no, she doesn't care. She's great. And she said that in her lovely town, I think it's Bedford, New Hampshire, which is really pretty houses. Some are old, you know, kept up nicely, a bit of property, everything. They're putting in UN agenda, all the housing, all this. That. And they brought a Cuban in to run it. Oh, God. And no you one know, said come anything. Come on, Americans. Yeah. Please. The problem with your program is that everybody who's listening knows. Yeah, and we're not getting enough people who don't know listening. They've chosen and their they, side, as Charlie. They're frustrated as I am. Yeah. They, they try to tell their neighbor who looks like, no, you know, I just read that recipe no. on Facebook. No. It didn't work. No. Or I just burned my toast. Or I'm, I'm watching TV. I'm watching. I'm going here. I'm, it's all frivolous, drooling, reactive psychology that has been inculcated into the people. They just go around reacting to stimuli. They don't understand. And the NFL. The NFL. The NFL, yeah. I wa Sam made me watch the inter intermission the other night, you know, and... Uh, I, would, I, would, I didn't watch it. It was that. just so awful. I mean, the robotics that are coming in now is frightening. And, you know, I never told you this story. When I was in the Department of that, I, I uh, was leaving one afternoon after I'd leaked the technology document. Uh -huh. And this 
guy came up behind me, and there were a lot of other people leaving, too. I was walking home, and he said to me, don't mess with technology. It's much more important than drugs. Wow. And I thought, ooh. <laughs> and he disappeared in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Now, our new commissioner that we've got, you know, who used to be police chief, who oversaw nothing, who let all that, we've got all these people murdered in Portland. They've never solved the murders, huh? Lowest okay. solution well, rate in America, right? Uh, uh, unbelievable. But you know what he's up to now? Oh, he's Mr. Opioid. He's good. That's the big problem. Forget the murders. We're going to deal with the opioid crisis. Well, yeah, I think we should do that, too. But that's not for the police chief to do. That's for medical people to do. That's for people who understand the problem. They're, you know, they're unbelievably scientific people, experts, etc. That's his agenda, the opioid thing. So that gets rid of his, his real agenda, which should be public safety, taking care of our families, patrolling our streets, catching murderers, prosecuting them. He has the worst record, I think, in the United States. Can you believe they approved this guy? Well, they didn't approve him. This was cast in stone long ago. They went through the motions of approving him. It was a done deal. Well, they deal. never would have got it if it hadn't been for that Republican and that independent, Moody and Hayes, who would well, not they, accept They sold us it. out. They did. They sold us out. And I hope everybody who's listening from Maine, if anybody is, that they understand why they have Janet Mills sitting in the governorship and why they have a commissar, the first one in the 50 states. He's a commissar. I don't care. I'm too old. They could come shoot me. I'll tell you. That's the truth. As Maine goes, so goes the nation. Just remember that, okay? And uh, look into your own city. I'll bet most of you, not this audience necessarily, but most Americans don't know if their city is an Agenda 21 city, if they have a charter, if they have a city manager. Just look it up. Call your local city hall. Do we have a city manager? Just act dumb. See if the person on the phone even knows. City manager is a commissar of your city. He or she runs your city. It's not the mayor. It's not the city council. It's the city manager. Well, it's been regionalism ever since I found that article by Professor Zeitlin. It's very easy to have people if they go to my book, right? All mm-hmm. they have to do is look at the index under Z. Mm-hmm. And he was a sociologist, University of California, I think San Diego. Yeah. And uh, he wrote an article for the Communist Daily World. And he basically said, listen, folks, listen, regionalism is communism. And UN Agenda 2030 is communism. And you hear Trump tonight saying, oh, oh, oh we're never going to be socialists. He said that. Uh, I didn't see it. I won't. Oh, I won't. yes. He said, oh, well, this country will never be socialist. I thought, oh, well, you know, at least he uses the right word because <laughs> God, the communists never use the word communists. They call themselves what? The United Soviet Socialist Republic. Uh, so we will be the United States Socialist Republic, just like Gorbachev told, you know, the European Union in London. He said the new the European Union is the new European Soviet, which makes the North American Union the North American Soviet. What could be clearer? What is a Soviet? It is a council, a council form of government, which means unelected. Not of, by, and for the people. No more. And everybody's no screaming and yelling about the Constitutional Convention? What oh, that, I haven't heard much about that lately. Is it still on the front burner in oh, some they circles? Come, they come up with it. You know, it's a diversion all the time, these neocons, who are all part of this. I mean, look at, look at, look at Coach. You know, with, with what's his name? That was, the, you know, the, the marriage between the two of them recently. The Koch uh, brothers. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the... the oh, oh, Van Jones, okay? Washington Post. Just type in Washington Post. Coach Brothers and Van Jones. They're all going to get together nice. It's nice. It's a little dance they're going <laughs> to have now between the conservatives and the liberals and the blacks and everybody else 
And I always say black because I like that word, and they were very involved in the American Revolution. I have a great print from my mother-in-law about a, a black guy pulling down St. George. So, you know, they're great people, the blacks in our country. They and said, they it's, sad that, it's sad that the, the American blacks of today don't honor and celebrate those people more. I know they'll I say they, that they do. They I should. think they do, but you don't hear from them. I was the just going to say that. The only about the black community yeah. are the things that make us think that they're all horrible. And it's the same thing with the Hispanics and the Mexicans and everybody else. Everybody's got to hate everybody else. And that is communism. Oh, but now we've got Van Jones and Coach Brothers. Now, and Van Jones is a commentator on uh, CNN, I believe, isn't he? Oh, he is now, yes. Yeah. And he's getting along beautifully. They're dancing together. So that's the sit-down well, meeting you were talking about. That's the the melding. That's the, Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, it, it was the dialectic, right? You have two opposite sides, and then you, you, you come to a conclusion, so you come to the middle. Right. Which is, you know, okay, it's wrong to steal, it's not wrong to steal. Well, then we all get down and we talk together, and then we come out, okay, sometimes it's okay to steal. And then you move over a little bit, and then it's always all right to steal. Okay, this is what's going on with the Coach Brothers who fund Heritage and every other conservative, phony, neoconservative group in this country, mm -hmm. Coach Brothers. Mm -hmm. And you've got them working with Van Jones. Now, go figure. No, no. It is what it is. It is exactly as you described. And it's going exactly where you're telling us it's going. And Gorbachev wasn't lying. See, this no, isn't, this is all an old, old plan. This goes way back. All of it. They've got time oh, on their it side. Does. Oh, they, it does. they took I've control of the, the media. Then, yep. well, they actually created the media. Then they took yep. control of what they didn't have control of. Then they took control of the education system. That's right. And in the beginning, they had control of the money. So what else is there? Ultimately, oh, yeah. how they get control of the money the day before Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, or, yeah. or the two Something. days before? Just like this lousy vote. What do they do? They vote. The Democrats vote in the Justice Committee on Friday, mm -hmm. 5 p.m. or something. Then everybody has a little weekend. I guess they had some meetings, didn't they? Then on Monday, they talk about, oh, we better move fast because we had the, the biggest turnout the state capitals ever had in opposition to this police chief. Mm -hmm. So we've got to move fast. So what do they do? They don't. They wait. Monday, Monday morning, they vote before anybody has an opportunity to submit testimony, to call anybody. They vote. I swear, you know, maybe the bylaws are being abided by. I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, that's criminal. That shouldn't have been allowed. Someone should have taken it, if you had a legitimate court system there, should have been taken well, to court. The no public input. Should have left. No, they the should Republicans have, should sure. have vacated that yeah. chamber. Sure. And said, we are not voting today. I agree. They shouldn't have participated. They had that in their hand, and they they just let it go. I don't know. Sickening, sickening. What's well, happening? Well, I must say, I have, we've had three years of can't describe it. Hell, and I had hoped that maybe hell. the sun would shine and the truth would come out. And it doesn't really have anything to do with Sam. It has to do with the truth about what our government is doing and not doing and how illegal it is and unconstitutional and how Sam had every single major constitutional right denied him. He didn't even shoot the guy. <laughs> he had every right denied him. That sums it up uh, perfectly. And remember, isms never die. No, they, do. they never die, they never do. I don't care if it's Catholicism or Protestantism or Communism or Socialism or Fascism. No, they're tools of mass die. manipulation, of course. And that's what's so great about our country. It has never been called an ism. It's a republic. We'll talk again uh, soon. Whenever you want, let me know. I'm always here. You know that. Well, I don't know. I will. That's the only thing I'm going to do is I'll talk to you, but I'm, I'm not doing any more activism. I've had it. 
Well, you've carried on your shoulders millions of Americans, and I, I think you deserve the time off. So if you want to take that, you take it. And You too, you know, buddy, but I don't know how to yeah. get you out of there. I don't know. Charlotte, you say hi to Sam. Hmm? I'll say, I will say hi to Sam. He okay. says hi to you. Okay. And uh, God bless you, Jeff, because you're just so unique. I mean, there are 300 million people in this country, and I know there are a few other really good journalists, not very many. You know, you count them on your hand, on one yeah. hand. Huh? Yeah. You know who they are. But you're the tops. And so I heard somebody say that today, and I was surprised, because that person I didn't think in the beginning had really knew much about you. Well, thank and you. she Fantastic. said he's the only good one out there. Wow, thank you. I'm glad we're getting through to the people that count, uh, people who still are Americans. Yep. Well, God bless everybody. God bless us. God bless the United States. Pray for a miracle, please. That's what it's going to take. Be well, Charlotte. I'll talk okay, to you soon. Thanks okay, thanks a lot. God bless everybody. Bye-bye. Charlotte Iserbeet is only one.